YouTube, Shuki here with a review of the Power Rangers movie, Power Ranger Team with Goldar Six Pack. And this is only available at Target stores. And as with most of these six packs uh, from Bandai America, this is $49.99 and again, only available at Target. Now, what makes this a little bit different than most of the six packs that come out for the normal television series line is that these are actually all exclusive figures to an extent. I'm not really sure. Goldar here in the middle is not available yet in the actual action, action hero line uh, as of right now. But it says exclusive metallic Goldar. So I'm thinking the one that gets released eventually at retail will have a very kind of dull mustard gray plastic and that's it. Um, it says Morphin Metallic Rangers over here because all of the Rangers have a metallic-ish finish on them. And I do have the normal version of the Red Ranger that I will be comparing to. I'm not getting all of the first wave because I decided to pick up the six-pack instead. And I love the metallic finish on them a lot more than the plain one. So I picked up Red just to have a comparison uh, figure but uh, this will probably be it for now. Alpha is in the first wave of figures. I did pick up Alpha, and we'll take a look at him separately. So that is that. Uh, they include the power sword and the little bubbly punch effects uh, on that side. And then back here, we just have pictures of the suits. I love these suits. I love these designs a lot. Still not super keen on the helmets, but uh, the suits themselves, I think, are really cool. So without further ado, I talked way too much about this little pack. Let's go ahead and get it open and take a look at the action heroes. Goldar is not really an action hero, but it's the term for the toys. I promise you that. So here we are, and I actually like these a lot. Uh, I wasn't quite expecting it. I was on the fence between the normal releases and the figure pack. I don't normally buy the figure pack. Uh, releases of these things but uh, given the fact that they not only had an exclusive paint job it was the only way to get Goldar as of right now uh, I, so I decided to get this and I'm kind of glad I did uh, before I take a look at the figures just real quick uh, his sword's kind of jank right now because I stored him weird but uh, here is a quick look at the metallic one and the normal just action hero one and I have to say I like the metallic one a lot it's not like a straight up classic metallic. It's that weird sort of semi-translucent uh, plastic that Bandai keeps doing for like their Comic-Con exclusives. Yes, I'll just get rid of your sword. It's fine. <laughs> so I don't want to say it's straight up metallic, but it does have a very nice sheen to it. And it just accepts light and reflects light very, very well. And I love the way that they look. In good lighting, they look absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's a shame that the Legacy ones won't all be available in this format because the uh, Legacy one that was at uh, New York Comic Con, I think, is in the same sort of style of plastic. And I mean, just looking at the two, th this one like blows this one out of the water completely. And given the fact that the suits in the actual movie are going to have a sort of metal sort of finish to them, I think this one fits a heck of a lot more than the flat plastic one does now of course if you only want one ranger or two these aren't bad it's the same actual figure but um i prefer the metallic finish compared to the flat one but uh yeah they're pretty basic action hero articulation and i knew that was gonna happen eventually you know what just for consistency's sake let's just knock them all over <laughs> um but yeah detail wise on the back here there is all sorts of spinal details and everything going on here out here let's zoom in and take a closer look there's butt got some nice butt molding going on in there um but in the front you got the silver details you got the power morpher right there on his belt got the morphin grid thingy on his chest which actually looks really nice all things considered it could be a little bit better but it's not bad at all and then you have the head detailing up there so Pretty nice uh, all in all. I dig this a lot. There are a lot of silver details missing, uh, of course, because especially down in the legs and the arms and stuff. The body's pretty good, but the limbs and stuff are missing a lot of detail. And of course, he does come with his power sword. It is just a clear piece of plastic, and of course, it can go to any ranger. It doesn't have to go to him. His hands are not special. <laughs> 
So it just fits in right there. But uh, that leads me to my one flaw about these figures that I'm just not a fan of at all. And that is the fact that they don't have any sort of bicep or like wrist articulation or anything like that. The arm is on a pin and swivel, so you can get... It's hindered a little bit this way, but you can get a full range of motion, uh, which is fine. But without that bicep swivel or like a wrist swivel, he can't really get any sort of dynamic poses with his power sword because he can't rotate right there. So that is a big, big, big flaw to me. Uh, there's no reason we can't have bicep swivels or wrist swivels in figures in 2017. I mean, come on. But uh, it, it is what it is. But that is my definite number one gripe with these figures. I hate not having that. I was like sitting here just trying to pose them on my desk when I'm bored and I just can't. Because <laughs> you, the the options are just so limited. It it's it's unfortunate, and you really couldn't see that at all. I apologize. But <laughs> the thought here is on a swivel system, so you got movement there. It is hindered in the back. You got a single joint at the knee right there. No ankle or anything, but the uh, or thigh swivel for that matter. But the action heroes never really have that level of articulation. The only thing that these don't have that the action heroes normally have is like a, a bicep or wrist swivel. And again, that's that's my big negative. But here is the Red Ranger. Really cool. My favorite of the bunch for sure. The metallic just really works on him. Uh, and real quick, here is the Black Ranger. Again, looking pretty sharp. I love the metallic finish on these. I really, really do. Uh, so if you want something a little bit more accurate and just something that pops out a little bit more, I urge you to pick up the figure pack over the individual releases. But uh, all the other Rangers, instead of coming with the Power Sword or their individual power weapons, because apparently they won't be in the movie, they have this little orby thingy fireball punchy effect as <laughs> their weapon. And that is just simply a little peg that slides into their hand. And all the rangers are the same. So there's nothing really too crazy there. But all the same levels of articulation. But here is the black ranger. Right there. Here is Billy. Triceratops. I'll take a look at their head sculpts real quick since those are all new-ish. So here is the Mastodon head sculpt. Not a huge fan of some of the helmets for the movie. I think they all look too similar. Because uh, there's, there's nothing in his helmet really that stands out as Mastodon to me. Uh, unlike some of the others in particular. If we bounce over to Billy... Uh, Billy doesn't have horns or anything, but he does have this, like, flare on the back of his helmet, which I think is a very nice touch that is reminiscent of a Triceratops' like, crown, uh, that I think is really nice. So there is that, and here is the full body of the Blue Ranger. Again, very beautiful metallic finish. And he has a little orby thing, too. Here are the girls. We'll go ahead and do Trini. Again, same little orby, fiery effect thing. And uh, articulation is about the same for the girls. Uh, they are a little bit oddly proportioned. Though, I mean, the proportions are okay. But uh, the girls have, like, leg bowing problems. And I atone a lot of that to just how they're packaged. Bandai America does not know how to package figures. But, <laughs> uh, again, articulation. I say have long necks, too. What's up with that? But... Full rotation on the head, the same system of joints up here in the arm. Again, no bicep or bicep, bicep or wrist swivel, no waist, no ab, and the same level of articulation at the knee. So there you go. Yellow is probably my least favorite of the bunch. I don't know why. I think the metallic just doesn't really show up as much on her. Compared to the others. And I think that's probably why it looks the blandest. They're also very like flat. They're very flat people. But anyhow. That is neither here nor there. So we'll go ahead and put that back. Here is a look at her head sculpt quick. Again nothing really screams tricer or triceratops. <laughs> Sabertooth tiger. So I kind of just wish the helmets had a little bit more uh, individuality in them. Uh, here is Pink's, which I think arguably looks really good. You do have the wing effects, and you got the little beak right there. Um, I've always liked Pink's helmet. You got a little fray in the back there, too. 
uh, which is a nice little touch. The pink metallic looks very nice. Very, very nice. Probably my second favorite of the bunch in terms of just how good the metallic shows up. Again, severe uh, leg bowed syndrome. That's an actual thing. I'm not really sure. But <laughs> so here is Kimberly right there. She doesn't really want to hold her little orb thingy all that well. But there we go. Good enough. And finally, last but not least, well, kind of least, to be honest. T is least, let's be real, is Goldar. And I, I'm not going to get into a discussion about the character of Goldar in the movie um, and whether it's good or whether it's bad or whether it's just a monster or whether he's an actual character because we don't really know yet exactly. But here is Goldar. He is l basically... If you stuck a figure of Goldar in the microwave and he melted a little bit, this would kind of be what you got. Uh, and so in the movie, he's like constructed out of gold. And so you, the monster that you have in this figure form is kind of like still forming. He's like goopy. He's got like melted gold all over his body mold. And his face in particular is just kind of, it kind of looks like tentacles, to be honest. Like he's trying to be like Cthulhu or... Um, I want to say Barbosa, but that's not right. Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, <laughs> so it, it's kind of a mess. The wings are pretty small up here, but they still look okay. I think if he had color in the face and just a little bit of black somewhere, I think the, the design would not be nearly as bad as it is. But um, I, I don't want to make full judgments on him yet until we actually see the movie and see if he has any other forms or... Uh, anything like that. We have, we do have the trailer. We have seen the trailer and he looked a little bit more solid in the trailer than this figure presents, but the metallic gold is really nice. It's actually showing up on my phone screen a lot better than it looks in person, to be honest, uh, but it is very nice. And again, it reflects the light very well, but I just wish he had a little bit more articulation is the same for him, but obviously he can't really rotate his head all that much because of his big old tentacle chin. Uh, and he doesn't have any knee articulation, uh, which is something Bandai America does a lot with the villain figures. They're like, oh, the villains don't need as much articulation as the rangers. And then they get rid of like a knee joint or something. And it's really obnoxious. Like it, it you can't pose him. He, his legs only do this. Like that's all you can do. So he's either doing the splits or standing straight. There's nothing, there's no in between for him. <laughs> so it, it kind of sucks. Uh, I'm not going to lie. But if this is the only way to get the Goldar figure, then I guess it is what it is. Uh, but I'm sure this figure will be released later on in the actual individual figure line. Like I said, I'll be it in probably a mustard gold color plastic or something like that. But there we go. There's Goldar. He's just going to fall down. So overall, I actually really like these figures. Again, the lack of knee articulation in Goldar and the lack of bicep or wrist swivels in the actual Rangers is a definite little hindrance to me, and I'm not a fan of that decision whatsoever, but uh, you just kind of have to take what you get, uh, I suppose. But for people who want more articulated figures of the movie Rangers, the Legacy Collection uh, figures will be out within a couple days now, probably. Uh, they've already hit a couple locations, but they're street dated for the 17th of February, I believe. So uh, keep your eye out for those. They will have all of the bells and whistles and articulation the Legacy line is known for. I will be picking those up as well, so stay tuned for a video on that. But if you're on more of a budget, the action heroes are not bad, and I do urge you to pick up this set over the individual releases if you like that metallic color scheme. Uh, other than that, Goldar is the only thing separating this from the individual releases. And like I said, I'm sure he'll be available at some point. But I really like the metallic finish. I think it gives it a more screen accurate appearance. Uh, despite these being the lower line uh, tier of figures. They still look really good on a shelf. Despite the lack of good posability. I'll say that at the very least. So overall, not too bad. If you're on a budget, these are the way to go. And again, I urge you to pick up the set for the beautiful metallic finish. But that about does it for this review. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss a cool video like this one. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care and have a great one. Bye.